Happy Floss Tube Friday, friends. My name is Carrie. This is Tiger Lily Designs. Welcome to Floss Tube episode number 88. Yay! Welcome! We're here. I feel like it's been forever since I've done a Floss Tube Friday. I've been on the YouTube, on the Floss Tube, on the 12 Days of Stitch Miss forever, for days, for weeks. For 12 days but it's been a hot minute since i've done a regular floss to friday with my stitching update and whips and finishes and all the things so what does that mean that means i have a full table full of stuff yes yes are you excited i'm excited okay so this morning i went and i gathered all the things my whips and my finishes as i like to do let's just run through it i have a table of contents to show you what we're going to be talking about today it's a little bit of this a little bit of that a little bit of pretty much everything. It's the kitchen sink all wrapped up into a floss tube. Yay. Okay, so I have whips galore because like I said, it's been a hot minute, two, three weeks or so since a floss tube Friday. So lots of whips, although I was kind of busy doing other things. So not as much stitching as I would like, but whips galore, finishing galore. I had a little finishing frenzy one day as I was getting ready, gearing up, not quite sure what, what B got in my bonnet, but I got her done. Got a bunch of finishes. I have a new new start that I'm going to be starting. A new start and finish to share with you. Stitching galore. Stitchy kindness. I'm just going to look around the table. Stitching kindness. We're going to talk about a knitting new start that I started. That's exciting. As well, we're going to do a little recap of the 12 Days of Stitch Mess. And that'll, that'll about get her done, I think. So, without further ado... Should we jump into the stack of whips? Let's do, shall we? So we're just gonna start right on the top. I don't even know what's what. I just went over to my stitchy chair spot. I have one of those Michael's wheelie carts, which is fantastic because I wheeled it back and forth. Um, I will keep it in my family room, TV room, the stitching spot area 90% of the time. But this last bit or so, I've done Jingle Ball, which I did Jingle Ball here in my studio. I didn't involve the entire family in Jingle Ball. Wasn't that nice of me? So I have a chair here in my studio. It's usually not here, but it's here for 12 days of stitch miss. It sits in front of my tree, in front of my, as, as Shelly calls it, my set. I'd like to accept my, here's my Oscar speech. No, I'm just kidding. She was so sweet yesterday on her video where she gave me all the accolades for my set. Mwah, you're so sweet. Thank you. I just love displaying all the things and behind me it was fun. I like pretty. I like pretty. Um, so I sat at my spot. Anyway, my wheelie cart went back and forth a lot in the last bit of so because I was jingle walling and so I was stitching and then I got a, a zoom with friends stitching and all the things. Anyway, so we went over to my cart and I basically just emptied the cart out and I said, yep, I've worked on all these things. So let's just go. What's in the mini one, shall we? The first one. Okay, yes. Okay. You never know. It's like a surprise. I do need to, on the agenda, this week, this, not this week, this season. We're going to stick with this season. This season, which could be a week, could be a month, could be, I don't know. I am going to set up my project library. I love the idea of a project library that Miss Shelley came up with. It is fantastic. I've got my library cards and my things all ready to go. I just need to dedicate the time to set up my library so that way when I look at a bag, I'll have a tag and it will tell me what's in there. That way, I mean, surprises are fun. Don't get me wrong. Love a good surprise. But sure would be nice to, to be able to find what I was looking for without having to open up every single keeper. Are you with me? I'm with me. Okay, so what did I work on? This was quick. This was lickety quick. This was just one night. I was like, yeah, I'm going to make a few more of those. Now, if you remember, when I was in Amanda at the Farm Girl Drag Goods, um, Shelly and I got this flock of Christmas wishes. Look at these birds. Should have sent this in her box to her. It wasn't ready yet. Um, it's coming. So I did two, two more. I did one when I was in Amanda, and that was it, pretty much. So this one I stitched piece. I stitched in a mana. And then here, since I've been home, I've stitched two more, hope and joy. So there are, I'm trying to think, eight words, six words. There might be one more that I wanna do. Just the, the words have to speak to me. Like courage doesn't really speak to my Christmas vibe. That's one of the words, I think. There's a couple more words I think that speak to me without I can't give you the pattern and I don't want to open it up and I don't want to sit here and you watch me do the things okay here we go hold on the words are no that's an alphabet goodness gracious grace hope peace rest courage love 
faith, and truth. So there are nine words, even though there's only six pictured, there's nine words that are charted beautifully to be cute little bird wings. So I might do love, faith, love and faith. Yeah, rest, encourage, and truth. Don't speak Christmas to me. So I've got two more to do, and then we got to finish these into birds into the wings, into the birds. It's going to be super cute. So that is not N-O-T, not going to happen for this Christmas season. No way, no how, but it's going to be great for next year, right? Look at me getting a head start. Okay, so I stitched on those this week. That is, that's on a mystery count. We don't remember what we bought in Amanda Linen. It's whatever count you need to make the birds, whatever the chart tells you. 40 count something mystery linen. And we just picked up country redwood and gassed as our uh, thread. So that was in my cute little mini keeper. Let me close it back up because I'm going to stitch two more words and then we're just going to put that one away. So yay. All right. Number two. Okay. I know what's in this one. Ooh, this is a fun one. This is my beautiful Hello from Liz Matthews, 12 Days of Christmas, Keeper, uh-huh, look at all that, Keeper of Goodness. So, now, if you recall, lost galore, um, can't show you a chart, I am stitching, so in this, I have all nine 12 days, all nine 12, really, yeah, all nine they're right there. All nine charts. So, hello from Liz Matthews has released nine of these beautiful charts. You want some stitching on candy? Because I also keep my finishes in there just to give me some inspiration because it's fun. So, let's, let's look at it just because we're here and I opened up the container. So, this is the first day of Christmas. It's Christmas season. You want to see it. Oh, okay. So, I have been doing this for years. Now, um, Liz started these I don't remember. I could go back and look. So she started these sometimes. I'm going to guess 2020. And I pretty much started day one when she start released it. I did a full Tiger Lily color conversion to Miss Seda Silks. And I'm doing it on 14 count. What was I thinking? I don't know. But look. Oh, so It's super pretty. It's super. That's just where I was uh, in 2020. And I'm okay with that. I love it. It's super. It's as it's comfort stitching. It is easy. I don't need a light. I don't need a, ma I mean, I need a light. Like I can't stitch in the dark, but I don't need a magnifier. I don't need like super readers. I don't need anything. It's just easy, breezy. Ugh, this is my favorite. This is my little favorite thing right there. This little hen with this little quilt star in this. This is, love it. And of course, the, 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 these birds and all their little quilts. I mean, come on. Okay. I love it. I love I love this. So I am definitely going to finish this. I had talked about switching fabrics and doing all the things. Nah. I'm just going to stick with the original plan, even though I only have three out of 12 done. And we still haven't released nine charts. So I'm like 33% done. Look at me winning. Um, but she is going to do releasing 10. She's already promised that day 10 is coming out in market in March. So that's exciting. So I decided, well, I better get some more stitches in. So I, yes, I skip around. As you noticed, I went from day one, skipped two. This is two French hens. So I did two and then four. No, I didn't do two, three, four. I don't know what I've done, but then I skipped, I skipped five. Went right to six because I loved these pink flowers. Okay, I love pink flowers. And this, right, okay, so it's adorable. So this is what I worked on here recently. You can see, I was working right there. So I was, I just love it. I love, love, love. Like I said, I'm doing a full Miss Sadist conversion. It's, I just pulled from my things. I am keeping notes of it. Um, I just, I'm, I brighten everything up a little bit. If you're new here, welcome. I stitch on Ada and Linen, both now. Um, I'm an equal opportunity fabric stitcher. 
also got into Lagana, but I think, it, it, you know, it, so, but I love both. I love both. And they both have their place in my stitchy repertoire and I'm excited for it. So this will continue to be a 14 count Zweigart country cream that I got by the bolt, basically, I figured from Fat Quarter Shop. Um, because I am, and I'm sticking with my original plan. I am going to make this, I'm going to make all 12 of them the samplers, not the trees, because I'm going to make it into a wall hanging. So at Christmas time, I didn't really have a lot of table space to put 12 trees. The trees are adorable. And now that I've made a tree and gifted a tree at a mana, I definitely want to make a tree, but I'm not going to make the 12 days of Christmas trees um, because I want that those stitches to be a Christmas quilt. It's like a combination of my quilting and my stitching all in one. That's my vision. It's a long plan. This is a long plan. So stick with me. So, but anyway, I did work on that. Um, it's, you know, stitching and season and such. And so that was what was in this one. So there we go. So the next one in the stash is in my fabulous October Keeper Club Keeper. Um, this is Shelly's double nickel birthday start. So this is not Christmas, but this is something that I do want to continue to get pro progress on because it sure would be fun to get it up and finished and on the wall. It is, in case you didn't know, it is the Be Kind Sampler by Stacey Nash. So, so sweet. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it's just, it's perfect. It's on linen. I'm stitching it on, here's my tracker card. What am I stitching it on? 40 Count Dames of the Needle. Um, the, the color is Cow Fodder. What an interesting name. I am using all the called four weeks, which is very unlikely, but that's what I did. I just did an add to cart, and it's on here, and I did not iron, and I, of course, I did not bring my board, but we're just going to go with it, and there we go. Perfect. So this is the progress I made before. I don't remember where I was last time I showed this to you, but I was nowhere near this. I'm working on filling this house in every once in a while. It's one of those things where I work on a leaf or a flower or two, you know, where you have to read the chart and do all the counting and things. And then I'm like, okay, brain needs a break. Let's go do some grass filling. So this is all going to be grass. It's ready for filling. And this is all going to be white house. So that's ready for filling. So I kind of like bip and bop between the two segments. But it's super pretty and it's super fun and I like to have this project in my my little trolley to pick up every once in a while when I'm missing my friend. So that is that. Let me just pop that all back in the keeper. And then last but not least, this is in my beautiful angel. I love this girl. She is holding my 12 Days of Christmas Santa's. Now, I feel like I've been showing you these for years because I probably have. Um, I don't have a project tracker card on this because it predates the project tracker card. So there, that tells you something. So this is the 12 Days of Christmas Santas. I love them. Um, I did work on them. So what I'm going to show you is what I'm working on. And that'll transition. What a segue. It's going to segue us right into the finishes because... I have some of them finished. I do not have all of them finished. Now, did I bring? Yes. Okay. So I brought my um, color conversion. I color converted all of these to RFL 12 weight. So this is like the sulky 12 weight, but it's RFL 12 weight. Um, I was an RFL artisan in 2022, so I was using a lot of their stuff dedicatedly. So I this is the 12 weight. I am doing this on a 16 count not hand dyed 16 count white chocolate. Like I said, this, this predates the tracker cards. It's 16 count white chocolate. I, I thought I put this, the one, two, three stitch sticker somewhere, but maybe I did it. Well, pickles. It's 16 count white chocolate. I think, um, Zweigart just off the bolt. And so there's my handy. This is available on my blog. I will put a link down below. So this is a, of course I cut it up and it's all wonky do, but I keep this in my bag so I can know what's what. So I did a color conversion from DMC to RFL to brighten it up. Now we've talked about this before. Of course, listen, if your team used charted prairie schoolers, don't get mad at me. I did not. This is a long story. We've talked about it before. I used to called for once. Once I went and got it and I started day one and I did it. 
and it just didn't look like the cover. I, you know, it is what it is. The red on the cover is 815. 815 is not a bright Christmas red. It is, I should have brought it for you, but it's a very muted burgundy-ish, which is great, which is super great. Um, but I wanted brights. Okay, so I wanted bright, so I did a so that's why I did a color conversion. I brightened everything up, and then I switched to sixteen weight or to twelve weight, so that on sixteen count Ada fabric, I'm using one strand. Pull it right off the spool. It is like the cat's pajamas, if if you want to be honest with me. So this is also super comfort because you get the coverage of two strands of DNC, but with one strand. It's like mind blowing, really. So I have some finishes, but also just last night, it was one of those things where I didn't get to stitching because I was in, in the studio working till almost 9.30 last night on other stuff, on the January Keeper box, let's just be honest. And that's what I was working on. And so by the time I got to my stitchy spot, my brain was like, don't think you're gonna be counting anything. Don't think you're gonna be doing anything that involves any of that hard stuff. And since I haven't started my knitting, which is what I really wanted to pick up, I went to this, which is perfect. I love having these options in my stitchy cart. So that way, when I was like, okay, my brain, I, I have to decompress before I go to bed and do all those things, but I needed something easy. And this is perfect. This is exactly what I needed, what I wanted, what I did. So as we are watching, binging, we're, we're binge watching a show on Hulu. Um, and so, you know, we watch an episode before, every night before we go to bed. Anyway. Long story short, here she is. Who is this? This is, this is my nine, nine ladies dancing. Is that what it is? Yeah. So, so cute. So, you know, it was just easy fill in. Like, so I just got to fill in back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Perfect. Look at her. She's going to be so cute. There she is right there on the little puppet. I still have to do that tree. That'll be perfect. So I did a little bit of that guy fill in. So I have nine. And then I still, yes, I did jump around with this one too. I'm nothing if not consistent with the jump around. Jump around. Does that make you sick of think of that 90s song? Okay. Yep, you're welcome. You're welcome. Go ahead. Jump around. Anyway, okay, so this, which one is this? This is day one. Okay, this is day one. See the basket and the Santa and the pear? Remember, I told you I skipped around. So that's day one. And then this one, it's always like, ooh, it's like a puzzle. This is this guy jumping over the roof. So there he is right there. So I had hit, I had this brown ready for fill-in. So I do need to do some, you know, do some fill-in setup work for next time I want to do this. So I do have on the back of my note, it's, this is very scientific. It's real life, people. I'm just sharing what's what. So this is days one through 12. And if they have an X on them, that means I've done that. So one, two, three, four, five. So I only have five more left to do and three of them have been started. So that's exciting. So I just need to start two more and go ahead and finish them up. Like easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? No problem. Anywho, let's go ahead and segue right into the finishes because like I planned it, but I didn't, but it's perfect. Okay, so if you've been around here for a while, Last year, because I love these things on Amazon. Um, do I need a hundred of them? Not really, but that's how Amazon sells everything. So I know that I did this in 2022 because it has a cute little 2022 charm on it. Yes, love it. So this is the only one I finished last year. This is number four of this series. So I just want to show you. So this was number four. I started with this one because I love the blue birds. This is the one that spoke to me. Once I restarted and used my bright colors, I wanted to start with, you know, start with the bang. And so I finished this, I'm going to say kind of like a needlepoint inspiration board. It's very simple, I think, in that it's two pieces of sticky board that I get from Amazon, which is bonkers. I should have, I will link it down below. It's like the best sticky board ever um, for price, for size, for all the things. So the back sticky board, I just stick right to the fabric. No batting. The, on the front, I do use a piece of warm and natural batting. That's my quilting batting of choice. So I have some of that. I cut it right on there. And then I do a nice tight margin. I am team glue gun right here. Yes. And so I glue gun them, squeeze them together, smush them, 
let them set. You really don't have to let them set that long because you know, glue gun, uh, it's magic. And then I do my cord. I've, I have a cord maker video, so I will link that down below. I love making my own DMC cord. It's just two skeins of DMC. So it costs you like a dollar 20 and you get this really pretty, I think it fills it goes in the crack of those two boards perfectly just gives you a little something gives you your tie i do a little dangle doggle on the back with these gourd pins also from amazon where you get seven zillion of them um the gourd pins the bells i will link it all down below but i love this is this is it and i'm like okay we're just gonna rinse and repeat that so like i said this was from 2022 this was my finishing frenzy Ah, from, well, since last time I was here. When? I don't know. But I had finished these stitches throughout this year. I've showed them to you through the floss tubes here in 2023. They all have 2023 charms on them, so that's exciting. Um, so let's just, do I have them in order? Probably not, but let's just look at them. Now, you will see this one's different. Um, all the rest of them have the green and red cording because it's pretty, but this one was the five golden rings and I'm silly or I'm goofy, I don't know, I'm something. So I wanted this one to have gold on the cording. So I use, like I said, it's always just two skeins of DMC. I will link my cording maker, I love it. So they're all finished the exact same way. Now the only other thing that I forgot to tell you is that this is off the bolt Lori Holt gingham. Well, Lori Holt's beautiful gingham is bright white. It is like in your, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous, love it. But I didn't feel that the bright white, red and white gingham spoke to this soft white chocolate Ada that I used. So I dunked it. It's a coffee dunk. I didn't bake it. I didn't cook it. I didn't do anything like that. I literally just brewed some coffee, stuck a half a yard of fabric in it, let it sit there for a little bit, did a little, let it do a little brewing, rinsed it out under the sink for a while, and then um, let it dry. And then ironed it, smelled like coffee, it's pretty fantastic. And then I used it, that was it. I mean, it's fantastic. So again, these are all finished the exact same ways with the cording, the two gourd pins, the bells. And then, like I said, these have the 2023 charms. I will probably put a tiger lily tag on it. So, you know, maybe one day down the road. So some, I don't know, some, my grandchildren will understand who did it. I mean. Is there anybody else that's stitches in my family? No. So there's really no confusion who did it. But any whoozy. Um, let's go. We'll go back in time. This is day three. Look at the chickens. I mean, come on. So, so sweet is the chickens. All right. So three, five. One day I'll be able to show you all of them together. And we'll do another little parade. Mm, what was that? Don't know. Something fell. I don't think it was a bell. <gasps> it was a bell. The gourd pin opened. So it was a jingle bell that went rogue on the floor. Okay, we're good. Phew. Okay, day six. So sweet. Day seven. Ah. Day, I already showed you four. I love these things. They're just easy peasy. So day eight, look at the little cow. And then we hop right to 11. Yep, mm -hmm. skipped. One day I will have all 12 done. So that is what I have for you today regarding the 12 days of Santas from the Prairie Schooler. All right, I have one more finish. No, three more finishes. And then we'll jump into something else. Let's just continue on with my little ornament finishing frenzy because that's what I did when I did those Prairie Schoolers. I had one more ornament that I finished that same day. And then I had two that I did during the Jingle Ball. So that's fun. So let me show you, this is the other one that I did during my little Santa frenzy. So the Wee Santa, ah, it's so fun. So this is the Wee Santa sal that my friends, Jenna and Sarah from Stitchy Friends did a sal in October, I think. I might've fallen behind, but the moral of the story is he's done. He is done and on a board and it's before Christmas. So I'm gonna count that as a big win. Yay. So I finished my Wee Santa on one of Chantal's gorgeous. This, this is one of the boards that came with your ornament maker box this year. Now, I will be honest, I do have the, the full box from last year. Not the full box, because I have used a handful. 
literally like two maybe. I have used them. I use a lot of sleds because of my cute little slally, jolly sleds. But the sleds, anyway, I'm, my goal is to use those. Yeah, we're going to use them because Chantel says we're going to. And so I'm, I'm game for it. Let's do that. But this is the one from this year's box. It's one of the ones. I don't know if it's one of the ones that she released in that you can buy them if you didn't get the box. I'm not quite sure. But I did. A, so I did. A, I did a finish. I did a pink tint stain tint. It's that. Um, it's not so tattered. I feel that's Katie. Beautiful Christmas, by the way drooling Christmas. Like she should just come to my house. Let's just be honest. Um, but it's like that something angel, angel, something it's Hobby Lobby. It's tint. Chantal's talked about it before. It's, anyway, it's beautiful wood tint and it's a shade of pink shocker. And then I did a white wash on it, which is why there's a little glob of white, which was just like that acrylic, you know, in the tube for a dollar type of white washy thing. Anyway, I just want to take it down um, a lot, a little bit a smidgen. And then these are two sprigs from a Hobby Lobby. One of those little candle roundy spriggy things I've showed you before. It's really just hot glue. And this, it's all just finishing easy peasy Hobby Lobby Walmart glue gun. And she's done. Little grow grain ribbon. And of course there is, yep. Yeah, I was going to say it's got, it's got my 2023 charm on it. So I won't forget. And that was my finish. So this is, I stitched mine on a 36 count XJU prim turquoise. It was like a fabric of the month. I changed all my colors, brightened it up, shocker. Um, uh, the pinks and the reds were from the pinks and the reds of the Oct July, um, the Keeper Club box, the custom floss from Forbidden Fiber Co. So that was fun to use. And then that's that. So that guy is done and he's so cute. I love him. Okay, two more finishes, two more ornaments, and then one more finish that is ready. So remember, I went to the Jingle Ball. I'm not gonna recap the Jingle Ball. I feel like there's lots of people that did it. If you were there, you know how fabulously fun it was. Yay. Thank you to Lindy Stitches and all the 12 designers. Gorgeous. I, I have my, what my, something I've kitted up over there that I got at the Jingle Ball. Super fun. It's a new start that I'm doing with my friend Jody. Simply Stitching Ocala. Are you going to do floss time again, Jody? Come on. Come, come show your things. Um, but Jingle Ball. I went to the Jingle Ball and did a class with Liz. I did her wreath class. So I did participate. I did my pre-stitch. Yay me. And so during class, I was able to, I finished, this was a kit. And this was the finish from the class. It's so pretty and so fun. I love it. So, I mean, the de the attention to detail that Liz put into her class, bonkers, awesome. Loved every bit of it. I loved, I loved the class. I loved the questions. I love that she had Joe there and her mom there and they were helping. It was the cute, it was the best thing ever. Best thing ever. Like, let's do more of those. And so, so, so cute. This was an easy stitch. And so I think she called for two reds, two greens and a gold. I skipped the gold. Um, I just put green in the middle. It's fine. Because I just went to stash and I pulled pulled two reds and two greens. That's just the moral of the story. So that's what I did. And I stitched it up real quick on, this was the, the fabric that came with it, which Liz and her mom dyed, which I think is fantastically fabulous. So in the meantime, she also, now of course here we are on the 15th. It is now gone. So sorry. Um, Liz has a fantastic Patreon. If you're not a part of Liz's Patreon, stop what you're doing. Go click the links, go find Liz, sign up for her Patreons because it's fantastic. Um, in that she gives you charts every month. And the cool thing is it, well, lots of cool things, but she gives it to you on the 15th. All the other Patreon people, I feel like do it on the first, like, and you get bombarded with all these things. She's like, let's you settle down from all those things. So, so on the 15th, you get a new chart. So today the chart came out so cute. I think it would be such a cute little, I won't say quick, quick stitch because it's lots of villain little stars, girlfriend, but super, super cute is the moral story. Love it. And doing it in a full, I, I immediately saw a color conversion when I saw the chart that came in. Anyway, I don't have it. I didn't print it. It was fantastic. The December release just came out. The moral of the story is November's release was adorable. It was these um, memo board charts. And it was this gorgeous scripty font that said today. 
And then there was a gorgeous scripty font that said to do. Like, it's really, really pretty. And I really, I, I do think I need a shocker pink to do board in my studio. So I'm, I'm going to have to find the perfect fabric maybe play with some rip dye and do it and then stitch this to do anyway it was a memo board and that she gave you and you do this and then you put it on glass and then you frame it right with the chart at the top and the whatever and then you can write on the glass with your dry erase boards your to-do list genius genius but the moral of the story is why am i telling you about something that i don't even have because also with this fabulous chart this memo bar chart was a full font, full font in caps and lowercase. And I feel like this, this is like the quintessential hello from Liz Matthews font. I don't know what it's technically called. I'm just going to call it the hello from Liz Matthews font. Hello, hello font. I don't know what she's called, but it's gorgeous. See this L right here with the little notchy and the notchy and the notchy. Okay. It's very, it's, you can, you know that it's, you know that it's Liz in that, because anytime she puts a font, you can, so anyway, she gives you this whole font, which I was like, oh, girlfriend, now you've opened up the floodgates for all the things to make. So it was football time. It was a football game Saturday. And I had just gotten this beautiful purple floss from Pirate Robbins during the 12 days of Stitchmas. Well, I got it before then. And I was like, this purple is Clemson in a floss if I've ever seen one. I went and grabbed Sunkiss from Forbidden Fiber Co., which is an orange tiger ball if I've ever seen one. Moral of the story is, I went ahead and stitched this up lickety split. So this is the, the font. This was the all caps. Now, if you're a Clemson fan, this you know exactly what this is. If you're not, you're like, what the heck? I have a Clemson tree. I've shown it before. It was all during Stitch Miss. <laughs> um, we're Clemson family. And so All In is definitely like one of the things that um, Dabo, not Dabo the dog. He's right over there supervising, by the way. Um, Dabo, the football head coach. Anyway, Clemson football, if you know, you know. So I immediately wanted to do an All In and then put the tiger paw in the middle. I used to make this as a pillow back in my applique days. Any hoozy. So I made this tiger paw. I just, I just, um, charted that up real quick. This is part of Liz's fonts in that Patreon chart that you can no longer get. So, so sorry. I don't know if you can buy her Patreon chart. If you join her, I have to ask her. I did ask her this morning, this question, um, because when I posted this on Instagram yesterday, lots of people wanted to know how to make this. And I, I can't tell you how to make this because the skills that I used to make this, I learned from Liz in this class. So I feel like these are her tips and tricks. These, this is her, this is her knowledge to share, not mine. So I asked her this morning. I said, "So when the people want to know how you do this magic, I think it's magic. Look at that! It's got the little wave. Like it was pretty ingenious. I'm pretty excited that I have this skill now. That I know how to do this because this." is very functional, cross-functional for so many things. Anyway, so she did tell me this morning that she's considering releasing this uh, ornament wreath as a kit for next winter. Now, in full disclosure, I'm trying to convince her to do Christmas in July instead. We'll see if I'm successful. But Worst case, I think, I think it's going to be something that, that you can learn that you can get from Liz next year. I know that's, that hurts, doesn't it? I know. T some good things you have to wait for. That's all there is to it. Good things you have to wait because it's fantastic. So I used the same skills that Liz taught me in that class to do this wreath. The only difference is, is that instead of having this beautiful handmade evergreen wreath that Liz made, Oh, I don't even know how many kits she made, but she made them all. I couldn't find one and I couldn't find the tools. But anyway, Walmart, $1.98. Comes with this mistletoe jiggity jog. I took that off, saved it. It'll, it'll go into my finishing bucket for, you know, something like this later, right? It's useful. It's fantastic. But the wooden ring wreath, 
ready to go. Comes with the hang tag. All you do is you do the little tricky wreath thing that Liz teaches you how to do. You add a bow and you call it a day. Love it. Any hoozy. So those are my fully finished. So I do have one more stitch to show you that I've worked on here in the last two weeks. And um, if you follow me along on the 12 days of Stitch Miss, you saw that day one in the t Tiger Lily 12 days of Stitch Miss advent box was this fa la 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 la. Yes, I know she's only got two laws, but I like to sing all nine. So let's just go with that. Um, because it's fun. <laughs> so this is Liz's gorgeous chart that she made for the box. I love it. I love it so, 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 so much. And then, so day one was this chart. Day two was a beautiful pink. Um, Ada from Sue at Legacy Fiber Arts. Day three was the Forbidden Fiber Co. Um, floss. Yeah, and then I think a couple days down the road was a finishing board from Chantal. Yes. Yes, I'm so excited. Okay, so um, about a couple days into the stitch, I got an email, a message, a couple different messages saying, so you're going to show us how to use this board, right? Yeah, mm -hmm, I totally am. <laughs> yep, I'm on it. I'm on it. So to be able to show you how to use Chantal's finishing board that I gave you in the Stitch Miss box, I have to finish my piece. So I got right on it, Johnny on it. Gorgeous. Okay, I just want to hold. I'm gonna hold the whole fabric so you can see. Oh, isn't it so pretty? And look, this is so. This is yeah. This is the size piece you got in the advent. So it was a fat quarter, and you only needed that much, right? Fantastic. So there's lots of opportunities to use it for later. But I went ahead and I fully stitched it. Yes, I did the monochromatic choice. Um, it was just you know personal. It took me. I I, I did hem and haw which way I want them to go. But I'm super happy with the choice. I think that the monochromatic just lets the fabric pop, pop, pop. And I wanted it to. So I started this and finished it here on the last two weeks. And so just so you know, um, if you are stitching this piece and you want to know, the good news is um, I have plans to film a finishing video I'm going to get this fully finished on the board from Chantel that came in the advent box here and then before Christmas. That's the deadline. I'm going to give it to you. So before Christmas. So if you haven't started stitching, stitch it up. It's I won't say it's a quick stitch. Um, those balls are some dense stitching, but are they beautiful? Oh, Liz is such a beautiful charter. Oh, beautiful designer. And listen, that's fabric. I don't know. I, I have to find something to go on the next more piece. More. Oh, I just love it so, so much. Um, so I am going to finish this on Chantel's board. There's going to be a separate video here on YouTube showing you how I finish it. I have just yesterday, I'm not going to show it to you here because it's going to go in that video, but one of my stitchy friends, her name is Pam. She sent me, she's like, I just wanted to share this with you. I felt, I literally stopped everything I was doing, had to go onto my computer because it wasn't big enough on my phone to see. She finished, she stitched, and she did the multicolor one. Beautiful um, stitch. And she fully finished it on the board already with, I, I don't want to spoil it for you. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Um, she, the good news is I get to share it with you. I'm going to share it with you in that video just to give you some other, other inspirations as to how to finish this. But oh my goodness. So if you have finished this, share it. And you want me to share with what? Oh, I'm going to share it. Let's, it's the Tiger Lily family, the community. Let's share together. So if you've done it, send me a picture. I'm, I'm going to be shooting and I would love to share too because Pam's going to let me share with you. And oh my gosh. Listen, if you haven't done it, you're going to want to do what Pam did. I want kind of want to do what Pam did, but I stitched this, but it's okay. It's going to, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Moral of the story. Gorgeous. Um, I feel like this is the Liz Matthews commercial, but you know, sometimes that happens. So I also, like I mentioned from the jingle ball, I kitted up. This was the only chart I bought. Yep. Only chart I bought at the jingle ball because I was trying to be good. I feel like I have about 327 charts over there that I haven't stitched 
And so I felt like I needed, I need to pull, I need to do a stash thing. I, I do have some plans for 2024. They kind of have to do with my cousin and she's got a plan and a board. I'm going to let her bring it to you, but hopefully next time I might have some progress on that. I am going to do, there's going to be a little structure. Let's be honest. I can squirrel with the best of them. So structure, it's not going to be like structure adjacent nearby about, we'll see. There's going to be something. But anyway, I felt like I, I could only, so unless I loved it, like, and I was going to stitch it right that moment, I did not add it to my cart. And, but this was one, this was the one that I felt I needed to add to my cart and check out and buy because I wanted to stitch it right now. So the good news is, is I got this one. It's adorable. I love the sheep. I love all the things. Like I said, my friend Jody and I simply stitched on collar. We, she's already started. She's awesome. She, she follows the rules. There's no rules, but she followed our plan. We were going to start this on December 12th. We had, uh huh, but I didn't do it yet. But I got it all kitted up. Step one, kitted it up. So I did a floss conversion to Forbidden Fiber Co. I kind of pulled from Stash as well as condensed the floss colors. Three, six, nine, twelve. She calls for twelve. I think I went down to nine. So I had to combine some of the flosses as I like to do. I'll share with you what it is. But I've blinged it up with my super cute look as the yo flies, my charm. And this is a Jenny's Gem Minders that's gonna go on there. So sweet. And this is a sweet autumn stitch charm. Yes. And then I have pulled. What did I pull? And I searched it too. I was ready to go. I didn't go anywhere. I mean, I sat in the Zoom and yik yacked. Um, this is 20 count because I want it to be super cute and tiny. Because on 20 count, it's going to be nine and a quarter by six and three eighths. So it'll fit in like an eight by 10 frame, I think. 11 by 14. I might have to custom it. We'll see. I don't know. But I wanted it small, tiny. Moral of the story. So I did 20 count, but I wanted a 20 count. And this is beautiful. Legacy Fiber Arts Boston Tea Party is what I have pulled for that. And I have it going into my 12 days of Stitch Miss Advent Project Keeper. So that is my whip. Maybe next time I come here, I will have some stitches in it. We shall see. So that is my stitching. Hold on. Let's review, shall we? All the things. Look at me. Oh, okay. Another new start. Da -da -da. This is my fave. This is my sweater knitting bag. In case you were ever curious as to what this was. This is my beautiful mother's artwork um, that I made into a tote bag. And... Um, but I use it, I, I try, so far I've been good. But I almost fell off the wagon just this morning. Shelly sent me this picture of this gorgeous yarn that I was like, oh, I need that in the sweater. I have restrained so far. It's TBD on how long that's gonna last. But my goal, my plan, my goal, my strategy is to only have one sweater on the needles at a time. So if I have a new start in my sweater bag, what does that mean? <laughs> That means my green sweater that I've been working on for I don't even know how long is finished. Now, I almost wore it today, but I didn't because I need to weave in the ends. It's got it's got ends. It's got the, the ends all wonky dooey. I haven't weaved those in yet. And I might wear it on Christmas. I haven't decided yet. So we'll see. We'll see. I want, you know, might unveil it. Anyway, the moral of the story is I finished the green sweater. I'm super excited about it. So if I finish the sweater, I had to do a new sweater. So be, I went to my sweaters quantity cat right here, right below this shelf. There might, like, this is beautiful, like, one skein wonders. Down here, there might be a couple sweater quantities of yarn. <laughs> No, I don't have a problem. I don't need an intervention of yarn. It's fine. It's fine. We're fine. We're all fine here. Um, so, but if you remember, this fall, Patrick and I went to the Shenandoah. We went to the sheep farm. Remember the Sistari? She, oh, Francis the shepherd. Love everything about it. Hold on. Okay, guys. Right here. So, when I was there, we got beautiful sweater quantity worth of the this is the rambulet this is their sheep love it 
um like i said the, the sistari this is the this is the yarn that made from their sheep which is our, their rambrule sheep it's so beautiful and this purple love purple and then i got this heather because i just i wanted a little something okay so a reference to my little library. I'm trying to create a little library of quilty books and applique books and knitting, just books. A library. That's where the books go, right? So last year, I acquired this book. This is called The 52 Weeks of Easy Knits. Yep. A year ago, I acquired this book. I haven't knit anything out of it yet. It's super pretty, though. And so, I was on the Ravelry for way too long. And then I was like, no, but why have a library if you're not gonna use said library? So I did. So hold on, let me, I don't wanna give you any of the pattern details, so we'll cover that up. So I went into my book and I found, look at that. So, so sweet. So it's just a simple stripe. It's nothing fancy. This is called Easy Knits, right? So this is my third sweater. I'm, I'm nowhere near, I'd love to do a color work. I would love to do all kinds of things, but I want to stay in my lane. I want it to be easy because that's when I pick up my knitting is when I want easy, mindless, breezy stuff. Not let me think about it and super count color work. Not yet, at least. Not yet. Baby steps, baby steps. So this is going to be sweater number three, I think, but not in that mustard and red stripe. Instead of the mustard and red stripe, it's going to be purple, which is the pinstripe of this gray every over isn't that fun? So fun. Okay, so step one of making a sweater is doing gauge, a gauge swatch. And I follow the rules because especially with sweaters, you if you don't gauge swatch, you're going to end up with a sweater. Oh, my sweater fits too. That's exciting. My green sweater. Although I did block it and I feel like either I'm, I grow, I don't know, the whole blooming and growing, I haven't quite figured it out yet. Because all I do is I think that my sweaters, they fit, they're nice. It was a little crop toppy, and now it's nowhere near crop toppy because it grew in it. Anyway, moral story. Always gauge swatch to at least try to be, um, trying to make a garment slash fabric that is per the gauge. So I gauge swatched, and then I blocked it. Isn't that so pretty? Look, so that is, like I said, this is 100% wool. This is not super wash um, because, listen, we talked to Francis and all the things regarding the super wash and he's got quite an opinion on it. Listen, I'm still team super wash, don't get me wrong. But this is so soft, this Rambouillet, it doesn't need to be super wash. It is not gonna be itchy on my skin. It is not itchy at all, it's beautiful, beautiful. And it will last like three lifetimes. So um, it's worsted weight. It's suggested on size eight needles for 14 stitches. I needed, so I bumped it up. I think I'm using a nine, US nine to get gauge for the sweater. And I love, I love the fabric. It's a little open, but that's okay. Like you can, can you see the holes coming? I don't think you can. I can with the lights over there, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful and I love it. And, and because it's bigger, it should knit up faster because the stitchers are so big. I think the gauge was between 14 and 16, something like that. So it's a nice, hopefully easy knit, easy adjacent. But I love just, you know, because it's hand dot, oh, I just love it. I love it so much. So anyway, that's my gauge swatch for my next sweater. I've got it all ready to go in my bag. I got my, my needles ready to go. These are my, anyway already already so hopefully next time i'll actually have a yoke maybe something i don't know i've never done a stripe before i've only done so that, that's that's the new thing for sweater number three is a stripe two colors my first two sweaters have just been solid the same yarn run and round the first one i did a hand dyed and i didn't change the skeins or alternate the skeins or whatever so it's very what's the word blotchy I don't know what you technically call it, but you can tell I didn't use this. The skeins were supposed to be from the same dye lots, but it was still, it's hand dyed, so whatever. But it was very like stripey, but unintentional type of situation. I still like it. It's, lo it's lovely. It's lovely. 
Maybe I'll wear it sometime. A little bit of stitchy okay. kindness that I want to share while we're here and so I can put it away and start enjoying and all the things. I went to my P.O. box and I got a couple Christmas cards. This is from my friend Lucille. How gorgeous is that? Listen, I used to make hand cards. In, in my life, I've done this before. So not only was it on the outside, it was on the inside. It was like a double, two cards in one. Beautiful, but I love this. I think I'm going to turn this into like one of those thread pretties. So I hope she doesn't mind if I'm going to disassemble her card a little bit, but then I'm going to be able to use it and enjoy it. I love it. Thank you, Lucille. And then my friend Rose sent me a Christmas card. So sweet. And then she included three perfect. Hey, do you know me? I love it. Perfect Tiger Lily DMC colors to add to my stash. Thank you so much. And then my sweet friend, Nicole Sport. Now, do you watch her? Because if you don't, you need to go follow her. Although she just hit 100K subscribers. Yay, Confetti Cannons. Nicole, you're crushing it. I'm so excited for you. Mwah, congrats. <gasps> look at this sweet card. I mean, look at those woolly mammoths. Listen, this is a professional paper carter, in case you were wondering. Nicole Spore, she's a professional paper carter. So I now have a piece of her artwork. And she sent me this beautiful needle burlock in tiger lily colors yes listen i have the the tools the acute the die cutting machines and the the things that you need to make this beauty but all i've done is cut it out now i don't have to make one because nicole made one for me and it's so pretty and look she put a k on it it's so pretty i love it so much and this beautiful it looks like hand dyed like twill ribbon oh gorgeous gorgeous if you don't follow her you need to follow her but be be prepared be warned i've told you you will be enabled to be a paper carter you will be enabled to be a felt doodler she has a stitch along going right now with this adorable snow globe santa situation with chantal so fun so that was my stitchy kind one more stitchy kindness in the mail this was from my friend judith she reached out and she said, I have some vintage stitching. Would you like it? <gasps> yes, I would love to give new life to vintage stitching. So look at that sweet little marigold. And then there was this set of, now see, I've seen this before. So this must have been a pattern back in the 60s. It's like these little uh, pagoda houses or something. So cute. So that is super fun. Now this is something I have never seen before. There's two of them. And they're going to have to be something extra, extra special. <gasps> look at that. I mean, look at that. That's just Sue Bonnet on a whole nother level. Look at her skirt. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I don't even know. But she's, so I've got the twins. Aren't they not the cutest? I don't know what they're going to be. I don't know how they would be a project keeper. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. But they need to, to, to live their best life. I mean, they're on a king-size pillowcase. But, but they need to go somewhere where they're going to get looked at and appreciated on the daily. I love them so much. I don't know what they're going to be yet, but TBD. And then this gorgeous, gorgeous table linen that Judith sent to me. Look at that vintage stitching. So, so pretty. This does, this is a perfect candidate for Keeperland because there are three huge, um, there's some, this was well loved, well, lots of beautiful family donors, I'm sure, were under this, but they spilt the gravy a few too many times. And so, in the stitching too, but that's okay. It's perfect. There's lots of stitching that is salvageable and repurposable and upcyclable and going to be a keeper in its next life and totally loved and adored by its stitchers. So perfect. So that was my sweet vintage haul and stitchy kindness for my so friends. That's going to wrap me up for today. I do have wool applique that I started. Remember when I went to Amana and fell into the deep end of wool applique? 
I started it. But I'm going to save it for next time because I want to have something to share with you next week. And I'm hoping to make some progress on it. But um, Noah and Lily come home tomorrow for winter break from Clemson. So let's just be honest. I don't know how much stitching, quilting, knitting. I don't know what I'm going to have time to do because I'm just going to sit and stare at my kids. Really, let's just be honest. Hopefully not. We're going to be baking. Lily loves to bake. So we're going to make some Christmas cookies and caramels and candy and all the things. Get ready for all the fun. Okay. But I did want to, we're going to review just a couple things before I let you go for the day. Remember 12 days of stitch miss. Now, if you've been around, you know, 12 days of stitch miss, it happened. You watched. If you have submitted your crossword puzzle, thank you. As of this morning when I filmed, I have received 252 crossword puzzles. So that's exciting, but there's still lots of time, lots and lots of time to be entered into the grand prize, which I've told you 17 times is bonkers. And I'm going to tell you again, it's bonkers. I am going to also film a show and tell of the grand prize box just for funsies one more time between now and then, but you do have time. The winners will not be drawn until December 25th, 26th, 27th. So let's just say by the 25th, you need to have your stuff entered in. Um, Cause one of those days is when I'm gonna do it. You need to submit your crossword puzzle. How do you submit your crossword puzzle? You need to watch the daily videos and get the word of the day. The word of the day goes in the crossword puzzle. The word of the day is also, what you use in the comments down below in the videos to win the daily prizes. So every day there's one, two, five, lots of daily prizes every day during the 12 days of Stitchmas. These small businesses, the 24 small businesses that I fit you were super generous and donated lots of goodies for me to share with you. I'm super excited. So one thing I wanted to clarify, I did get a question and I was like, this is a great question. I'm going to answer it for all. I had talked about it at the end on my day 12 video. You can only win once, right? So, cause it's fair, right? Everybody, you don't want somebody to win day, day one and day seven, you win once. But her question was, what if I win? And I'm going to start with day one. I'm going to record the video and we're going to, it's a YouTube comment generator picker thing. And we're going to start with day one and we're going to go to day 12. That's how the, the giveaways are going to be drawn. So one through 12. So once you win on day one, you can't win on day seven, right? Makes sense. All the winners are going to be drawn. It's going to be like a palooza of party. I can't wait. I cannot wait for all the giveaways um, and to give all this stuff to you guys. Like there's so many good things, but her question was, well, what if I went on day one and then I win the grand prize? Okay. Great question. Gold star. Great question. If, if the person that wins the grand prize, cause I'm going to do day one through day 12 and then the finale, the final draw, of course, will be the grand prize winner. If you win on the grand prize and your name has already been drawn on one of the days, you forfeit that day and win the grand prize. I understand the grand prize is the cat's pajamas, is, is the bee's knees, is all the things. So, of course, if you win day three and the grand prize, you're going to choose the grand prize. I get it. I get it. So if by some magical world of the things, somewhere along the days, you also won a daily prize, but then you win the grand prize. Don't worry. You don't get, you don't forfeit this one. You get your grand prize. And then I will redraw for that daily winner. Make sense? Hopefully it does. I, like I said, that was a great question. Perfect clarification. I wanted to clarify to all so that you weren't confused. It's definitely worth entering into the grand prize. Don't worry. All the things. Entering all the days. Lots of good stuff. What does it hurt to enter? So many good things. I hope you guys have given this, um, a lot of the small businesses support and love. They all have coupon codes. Some of them have expired. Some of them have not. So go check them out. The link is in my blog. You get the QR code. All the things. Go check that out. Last thing is I wanted to say a quick thank you to seven more friends 
who have utilized my Buy Me a Coffee link down below in my video to help with the shipping associated with the lots, lots of prices I'm going to be shipping out come Christmas time. So Tracy, Beverly, Teresa, Laura, Deborah, Lori, and Martha. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to my sweet friends for helping me, contributing to the channel, contributing to the grand prize, contributing to the 12 Days of Stitched Myths initiative and all the work that went into it. I truly appreciate and I, I appreciate you, um, your donation and helping me out and the support that you give me. So that, let me scan the table real quick. That's it. That's what we have today for Floss Tube Friday, friends. I will be back next Friday. What I have, I don't know, but I'm not going to miss the Floss Tube Friday. I got to come catch up with my peeps, tell you what I've been doing, maybe show you some cookies. Maybe we'll just have a cookie breakfast. I don't know. We shall see. Oh, how fun would it be? Maybe I'll see if Lily wants to come. She's never have. Trust you me, I've asked her half a dozen times if she wanted to come be on my Floss Tube Friday. Shockingly, she says no. I don't know why. But maybe, maybe I'll tell her you guys want her to come and she'll come and say hi. I don't know. Probably not. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> all right, friends. So until next time, I hope you have a fabulous weekend getting all the things wrapped your presents, if you celebrate, if you do, just enjoy the family and enjoy the stitching. Happy knitting, happy quilting, happy hooking, happy wool applique, happy making all the things. I'm so excited I'm to make some things in the studio. So I'm gonna bring you along. I showed you guys lots of stuff, lots of stuff happening. Anyway, friends, until next time, happy stitching.